Hi there, and welcome to this Darwin Arts introductory video tutorial on Trilobite 093. In this video, I'll introduce the main features of the Trilobite user interface running on a Macintosh computer. Most of the time, I'll be using the standalone version for this demonstration, but towards the end, I'll launch the audio unit plugin version in Ableton Live 9 and give a quick overview of parameter mapping. This tutorial assumes that you've just installed Trilobite and are launching for the first time. All right, let's get started. To launch Trilobite, use the Apple Finder browser to browse to your Applications folder and open the subfolder labeled Trilobite underscore 093, where you double-click on the Trilobite icon to launch. This is the Trilobite main window it provides the interface features necessary for loading and playing modular synth patches and will be the focus of this tutorial. I'll give a quick overview of the different panels in this window with descriptions of how they relate to each other. Here, on the left side of the window is the Bank Manager area, which gives you immediate access to your banks of patches. This top table section shows the banks which were installed with Trilobite. When you click on any of these, Notice how the bottom table is updated with the names of the patches in that bank. Each bank may hold up to 64 patches, and each patch represents a different configuration which can be rendered by the modular synth. For more details about the bank manager, you can click its Context Help button. That's this little round button with the question mark. This area of the main window, mostly empty right now, is the modular synth panel section, where synth panels are displayed for active patch renderers. To load a patch for playback, you can simply drag a line item from the patch table into a mod synth panel and drop it, like this. If you want more than one patch loaded, but only one mod synth panel open, that's easy. Just drag another patch from the patch table into the empty background of this section, like so. Once you have patches loaded, you can make your first sound by clicking the play buttons in the mod synth panels. To adjust the volume of individual patches, use the mod synth panel gain sliders. Depending on what patch you load, some of the sliders in the parameter section may be enabled. What these parameters do depends entirely upon the patch. For this basic frequency modulation patch, parameter 0, that's the first one. My scriptwriter has an engineering mindset, controls the modulating oscillator frequency, and parameter 1 controls the carrier frequency. To see how these parameters interface with the loaded patch, we can take a closer look at the patch by opening the patch editor for this panel. To do this, double-click on the little patch thumbnail. The editor is launched as a separate floating window which for the moment I can expand to full size so we can get a better look. For those of you well versed in electronic music, this patch is obviously the standard frequency modulation configuration with a carrier oscillator, a modulating oscillator, and a sum module to combine the carrier frequency and the modulation signal. But this is just a quick start video and electronic music theory may be a little out of scope, so I'll move on to why we're really here. Using the finger spread gesture available on the Macintosh version, I can zoom into the patch. As you can see at this magnification, each input port to the sum module, that's the ones on the right, has a floating point number and maybe an enumerated green ball next to it. These represent a scalar value for the input signal and the mapped parameter number respectively. The number in the green ball corresponds to the index of the parameter slider in the modular synth panel. For now, that's all we'll be doing in the patch editor window. Check back with this YouTube channel for a video introduction to patch editing, where I'll cover this window's features in more detail. If you can't wait that long, click this help button to get a jump start. Now, I'd like to introduce you to the remaining main window features. This is the Modular Synth Control Panel, which groups some functions pertaining to the Modular Synth Panel section. Click this button to add a Modular Synth Panel. These buttons control whether all input or output audio to the synth engine is muted. 
This button will also stop players. And this button does a global reset of the modular synthesis engine, which might be useful if things go haywire. Now, I rushed through those buttons so I could get to these last two and demonstrate MIDI mapping. You can't see them because this is a screen capture video, but I attached two Korg USB MIDI controllers to my computer before launching Trilobite, a Nano Control and a Nano Keys 2. To make sure I'm getting continuous control input from the Nano Control, I can turn any one of the knobs and voila! The little MIDI meter shows some levels. When I play a few keys on the keyboard, we can see that the keyboard is there too. Okay, so we know our devices are attached. Now let's automate the parameters of the frequency modulation patch thusly. I just click the Map MIDI CC Mode button, and as you can see, we've entered MIDI Continuous Control Mapping Mode. All the Mod Synth panel controls capable of being automated by MIDI Continuous Control are highlighted, even volume and play buttons. To automate the Freak Mod patch, I click inside the highlighted boundaries of those two parameter sliders and those two boundary rectangles start to flash. Now, you can't see what I'm doing next, so I'll describe it to you. I give the first knob on my nano control a small tweak, and then I give the second knob a small tweak. Now, those two parameters are MIDI mapped. Let's leave MIDI mapping mode by pushing the Stop MIDI mapping mode button and turn on the patch so I can show you. Thank John Chowning for this. Uh, I could do that all night, but I guess that's not why you're here. Now I'd like to show you how Trilobite can also be used as a keyboard instrument. To do this, I'll load a patch from the Keyboard Instruments Bank and show you how to map a range of MIDI keys to it. So let's open the simplest of all the keyed instruments, the simple oscillator organ, and take a look at it. Again, I'm double clicking on the little thumbnail window of the Mod Synth panel to open the Patch Editor window, and then expanding that to full size. Now, the thing that makes this a keyboard instrument is the use of a MIDI key in module to drive the frequency of an oscillator. If you open all of the patches in the Keyboard Instruments Bank and examine them more closely, you'll see that they have at least one MIDI key in module and a similar variation of this usage. Let's map MIDI keys and play some notes. To start the mapping process, I click the MIDI keyboard button in the Mod Synth control panel like this. And then, just like the MIDI CC mapping mode, some areas of the Mod Synth panel section are highlighted with mapping rectangles. To map keys to the oscillator patch we just loaded, click in its corresponding rectangle. And then the flashing green boundary indicates that this Mod Synth patch panel is ready to be MIDI keyboard mapped. Again, since this is a screen capture video, I need to describe to you what I'm doing with the Nano Keys controller. I press and hold the lowest note on the keyboard, keep holding, don't release, and then press and release the highest note on the keyboard, and voila! The keyboard is mapped and the green rectangle stops flashing. I'll exit MIDI mapping and play a few notes for you. That really is a very plain little sound. Let's try something more interesting. That's a little better. I've only given you a summary of the most basic mod synth panel features, so don't forget you can click the context help button to open the user guide and get more detailed information. Now I'd like to move along to presets management. Let's assume that we've just found a collection of patches which work well together and then spend a lot of time mapping MIDI control to their parameters. We don't want to have to do it all again. To help with this, Trilobite provides performance preset management using the presets panel. With the presets panel, you can save the current state of the mod synth panel section, including all loaded patches, MIDI mappings, current parameter values, you name it, as a trilobite preset file like this. Click the Save as Preset button and select your destination file. After you do this, the preset you just saved is retained as a loaded preset and may be easily reloaded by selecting it in the Select 
preset combo box. For more information about the presets panel and trilobite presets in general, click the panel's context help button for more information. That's most of what I wanted to show you for this tutorial video, but before we go, I'd like to open Trilobite as an audio unit plugin running in Ableton Live 9 and show the similarities between MIDI CC mapping and plugin host parameter mapping. So let's close Trilobite. Because we're modeling what it's like to run a fresh install of Trilobite on your system, I'll show you the process of manually installing the Trilobite audio unit plugins after you've already done your installation. To do this, browse to the Trilobite folder in your application folder and copy the two audio unit component files. Then browse to your shared audio plugin components folder. I'll do this slowly. and launch Ableton Live. I'm demonstrating this using the 32-bit version of Live, but everything I show you works exactly the same in the 64-bit version. For this demo, I'm assuming that you've already set up and configured Ableton for use with other plugins. If not, you want to pause this video and do that first. If all is well and the plugins are detected, you should see them when you open the Audio Units Plugins option. There it is. To load Trilobite, simply drag the Trilobite AU icon down here to the Live Set section. And wow, that should look familiar. Here are the patches we loaded and the same preset that we last saved. I'll close the Trilobite plugin window for a moment so I can see what I'm doing. Don't worry. Clicking the close button in this case doesn't make the plugin window go away, it just hides it. I'll bring it back in a few moments. What I want to show you first is that Trilobite exposes a set of 32 unmapped external parameters to the plugin host. You can see these in Ableton Live by unfolding the device parameters panel like this. I'm going to map the first two plugin host external parameters to the frequency modulation patch parameters in a manner very much like I did with MIDI continuous control values earlier on. Let's bring back the Trilobite window and I'll demonstrate. Just like I did with MIDI mapping earlier on, I clicked the MIDI CC map button. Click the two freak mod parameters I wish to map. Slide this over so I have some room to work on my little MacBook screen. And then, instead of moving the MIDI continuous controller knobs, I tweak the first two of these parameter sliders. Just like with mapping MIDI continuous control values, as I tweak each one, the corresponding highlighted rectangle stops flashing. Let's play that patch so I can demonstrate what I just did. And there you have it. Now you know the fundamentals of Trilobite plugin parameter mapping. That's all we'll cover in this tutorial video and I'd like to thank you for sitting through it with me. If you have any questions about what I've shown you and can't find an answer in the Trilobite user guide, please feel free to visit our website and post your question on the help form and we'll answer as best as we can. In our other tutorials, we'll show you how to manually edit your own Trilobite patches and use the Evolution Engine to evolve new patches from those, so please stay tuned. Please feel free to leave your feedback in the YouTube comment section or post to the Darwin Arts Discussion Forum. We're always encouraged to hear from you. Keep making those strange sounds. <laughs>